happy to be at an air show during this very strange year. And one aircraft that caught my attention right away was what I knew to be a CGS Hawk. The big tires, the big Tundra tires kind of threw me. And I went, ah, I got to go find out more about that. I'm Dan Johnson talking to a fellow named Joseph Shirley. And no, this is not Terry Short. Terry Short's the name we associate this. Tell me how you're associated with this, Joseph. So Terry and I uh, met a few months ago uh, via mutual friends. We had friends of friends uh, that put us together and thought we were a good pair. And uh, when I went down for the weekend, I ended up staying a month. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we got together in a meeting of the minds and saw how our two operations could be melded together. And that's what's happened. So how are you going to meld them together? So Terry's uh, still involved. I, I need his brains. I need his experience. And uh, we're going to meld it with uh, my group of guys that uh, love innovation and, and uh, making things uh, from scratch. And uh, we're going to take his experience and our guys uh, and meld them together into some new upgrades to the Hawk. What do the new guys do? What is your enterprise that this is coming into, if you will? So our shop has been kind of a rapid prototyping shop. We've done everything from uh, uh, build tables and chairs to um, drones. Drones have been a, a big part of our business. Uh, and then we got into experimental components, uh, one of which being uh, composite uh, panels for oh. avionics. So we've been building those recently, and, uh, and that's uh, sort of how we got connected up. We're friends with the people that uh, needed those components, New Terry. Okay, well, yeah. so you started kind of doing that, but now you're, you, this is your construction. Now, you said some of this is Terry, some of it's you. Absolutely. So divide that for me, if uh, you will, it's, Joseph. It's about 90% Terry's. Uh, we, uh, we've just taken some things and, and done some small upgrades and some changes. Uh, one request from the owner of the air crane uh, wanted to be some bigger tires. And uh, we indulged. We, uh, we put guess some 27-inch tires, which took a, a bit of engineering. We had to reinforce the uh, the axle. We had to change the axle from the uh, solid steel to uh, the inch and a quarter um, Matco um, billet aluminum. And that gives us a lot more options for the brakes. Uh, obviously, if you're going to have a big tire, you're going to need a lot more brake. Uh, and that's something that we uh, incorporated in. Because you get kind of a flywheel out of, effect out of a tire yeah, this size, right? A lot of right? torque, yes. Yeah. A lot of torque you're able to generate. So uh, to make the brakes effective, we had to upgrade the whole package. Uh, so that's all been engineered. We have it in CAD, and uh, so it's ah, very okay. repeatable. Now, now that's new, as I recall. Uh, I mean, the CGS Hawk goes back far enough. There was no CAD when no. this airplane was designed. No, I, I'm working off hand drawings. A hand lot. drawings. And Terry had definitely stepped uh, uh, that up a notch with a lot of engineered drawings. And then we've taken those engineering and hand drawings, and uh, and we have most of the aircraft right now in SolidWorks. Is that right? Okay, yes, that's one of the state-of-the-art pieces of software right. for this kind of thing. So yeah. that's impressive that you've taken it that yeah. far. Most people think, well, a little old ultralight doesn't need that. Yeah. But it can use it, can it? Yeah, absolutely. If we want to make a change, we can make the change in the model first. And then uh, through that experience, we can run stress tests. We can actually do aerodynamic tests. And all those things can be done ahead of time prior to even making a single part. Uh, and that's something that's going to save us a lot of time and money. And, and also, uh, it's going to help us make a better build manual. As uh, If you've ever seen ah, the build yes. manual of the other airplane, you know, a lot of uh, hand drawings from the 80s. Well, most yeah. build manuals, yeah. I've talked to many designers who have said, hey, yeah. designing the airplane, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's a lot of work. No question. Yes, There's a lot of pieces and parts that got to be right. Yeah. But they're usually into that. Yes, sir. Then they go, okay, now I've got to do a manual. Oh, my uh, goodness, this is more work than designing the yeah. airplane. Almost an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. But it's a very important component yes, when you're selling a kit. So right now we have the model to the point where um, we're in tests, but uh, we can uh, distribute the model and allow the customer to, to zoom in, rotate it in 360 degrees, Wait, isolate a, parts. A customer can do that? Yes, sir. Oh. We'll, we'll have the ability to do that uh, in hopefully the very near future. Um, and that, that spawn out of uh, one customer of ours, Larry, who uh, uh, has been working with us very, uh, very diligently. And uh, a lot of phone calls later, uh, I just started sending him pictures and and uh, from those pictures, we really uh, found a need for that model. Wow. Uh, we need the ability for the customer to see and touch uh, the aircraft, and that was one way that we could accomplish that. Uh, you know, I'm sure there are some other companies that are doing that, but it's sure. very progressive to let the customer flip things around and yeah. go zoom into a certain part. Now, yeah. This is while they're building it, too. They could do these things Absolutely. in addition to ordering parts later or whatever. Absolutely. So it's an uh, end-to-end -in, uh, process for us. So it helps us design, helps the customer build, uh, helps uh, current customers figure out what part they need. Uh, again, they're able to pull 
out and, and actually there's a tape measure built into the tool where they can take a <laughs> measurement and uh so i've got i didn't a, know uh, that that's clever i got a bunch of really smart guys that uh that use these type of things all the time in their in their builds for school and uh inform me oh yeah that's very possible so let's do it where are you located and how many guys you got working with yeah, you? Yeah, so we've got a handful of guys uh, that have been working for us uh, uh, in our in our build shop for a, a bunch of time. We're bringing on some more guys with this process uh, and people. Uh, we're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, this is okay. Suburb. Um, uh, Almost back where this airplane started. Yeah, so Ch Chuck, I believe, was up north uh, in Ohio, but uh, we're in the kind of southwest corner. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think bringing it back home to Ohio has been a, a, a fun uh, piece of the puzzle here. Ohio's yeah. got a little bit of aviation history. Some, yes. Something about some Wright brothers or something. Something. They're real close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Now, yeah. Joseph, I want to tell everybody that I did have to twist your arm a little bit. Yes, sir. You're not done yet. No. I mean, you, obviously, you can tell by the windscreen. Folks can see that. And yeah. if they look in here, they'll see there isn't a panel yet. But it's a mighty nice looking construction. I said, look, I want you to tell me this part of the story. Yeah. When you got it flying, you'll be you yeah. think you'll be at Sun and Fun 2021, you said? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We've already got the space reserved. Um, we, we're, we're hoping to be at the land with uh, aircraft. And uh, so we, we've got nine builds in progress right now. Excellent. So yeah. we normally don't go into what shows are coming next because yeah. somebody might see this sure. in 2025 or something. Sure, sure. So, folks, you missed that boat. But uh, this is a yeah. strange year we thought we should mention yeah. that you are going to be at shows. You're at this yeah. one. You're going to be at other shows. This is the only and then show you'll of the be year. Flying. The only show of the year. So we're happy to be here. Yeah, excellent. Uh, excellent. Even with what uh, what we just have done. So. Yeah. This looks like the Dynon HDX. Is that correct? That's correct. This is okay. uh, top of the line for everything. And uh, Kyle over at Dynon has worked with me for the last uh, month and a half, two months. Uh, to come up with a good package for our aircraft that's fitting. And as we were working through things, um, you know, being able to outfit this thing with their top of the line everything uh, has been no problem. So obviously it all fits in. Uh, we're going to have what we're going to call the shadow panel, which will sit behind the main panel that will hold all the extra components um, to keep it nice and compact. It will also allow us to be able to ship this as a uh, pre-built panel. You're talking about the senders and the other hardware that go with you got these. Got it. The radio, um, the radio is ahead, and then you've got the actual back uh, module, and the ADSB also, as a transponder, has a module that goes back there. And then uh, um, we're going to try to mount the antenna for the GPS there as well. Okay. So it'll be all one simple installation package that uh, will go in with some hardware and a few wires. The uh, the other thing that's really exciting about Dynon is the engine management system. They they make a, a pre-wire harness. Uh, plug and play, and uh, we have to send one wire to the back instead of a whole bundle of wire up to the front. Yeah, that's great, so, and that, that's some. Those guys yeah. have done some great thinking over many yeah. years. So. Here's their state of the art, but your yeah. execution here is beautiful. Is this yeah. is this carbon? It looks like carbon fiber. Yeah. Is it? So in our shop, we're able, able to make uh, our own panel. So oh, are you? Uh, okay. So one of our gentlemen, is R Rocky, he has uh, a lot of experience uh, with uh, carbon fiber and has come up with a process to uh, make our own panels. So we're very lucky to be able to make from. From from raw material to what you see here, as uh, and that that's going to lead us to other components on the aircraft that'll that'll be in the carbon fiber as well. They all match. Well, it's definitely beautiful, mm -hmm. but I have to say, for me, this is an ultralight. Absolutely. I go back to the days of the earliest ones of those, and yeah. we didn't have no panels like yeah. this in those days. So you didn't have angle <laughs> I mean, this attack. This thing has either, got I'm everything sure. on it. Yeah. Now. So angle of attack was just a matter of using Dynon's pitot tube, which. Uh, for us, looks cool. So uh, <laughs> making a standard package uh, and adding the pitot tube on just to have the AOA seemed like a no-brainer. And again, at the cost of Dynon for each little piece, it's hard to not uh, take advantage. They've, of, they've uh, put the package together very absolutely. well. So what we're trying to do here is just come up with a standard that uh, will cut down on labor uh, and ease installation and uh, standardizing. Uh, Beautiful. What, what gets put in. Tell me how we find out more and follow this progress. Give me your web address, and we'll put it up on the so uh, we're at our website right now, CGS Aviation. Uh, that is uh, a little dot bit com. of a, a dot com, excuse okay. me, and that's a little bit of a, a legacy site. We we still have yet to update that, um, but we are, are uh, just took uh, took possession of the Facebook page, which is uh, CGS Aviation USA, as well as on Instagram at the same. Excellent. So we're able to update. 
Well, thank you for talking to me today, oh. Joseph Shirley. Thank you for showing off your beautiful new panel. Yeah. You guys go back and get to work and do some work. We have a lot of work to get do. Get this thing done, and yes, we'll sir. follow more about this and all kinds of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at, Del at <laughs> where am I at? Here at the Midwest LSA Expo in beautiful Mount Vernon on a lovely day.